video will be about how to do a literature search for primary research articles and also a little bit about how to start your annotated bibliography um, or really how to format it. But I will also go over this in class. This is mostly in case you miss something or want to see how to do some of the computer stuff. So, oh, I kind of started it on Google already. Um, let me change that to, um, to get to Google Scholar, you just go scholar.google.com and you arrive here. Make sure you are logged into your school account while you're in here. Um, it'll say sign in or it may say your personal account, um, but make sure you're logged into your school account. So I'm actually going to do this for articles um, that nobody's working on. Uh, so I'll do it for somebody from last year. So um, a couple of the students were working on um, the effects of BPA, which is in water bottles, or really estrogens on fish. So um, one of the things you can just do is do you know BPA. So start very general, and you guys will see that um, if you look here, there's like 154,000 results right off the top, and a lot of them. Aridopsis is a plant. There's another plant. Um, membrane reactors. It's something on the cellular level. So there's not a lot here. So you want to begin to get more specific. So maybe you're working with horseshoe crabs. If you just type in horseshoe crabs, you're not going to find very much. But if you do horseshoe crabs and eyes, or horseshoe crabs and population, or horseshoe crab hatching, you'll find more and more information. So I'm going to do BPA, uh, BPA, and the she knew she wanted to work with something called a zebrafish. So um, you'll see we've narrowed it down a lot more. We're already to um, a little less than seven thousand results. So um, now you have all these things, and, and what do you do? There's a couple of things built into Google Scholar that I want to show you. First of all, um, you can, like, play with, like, the time range. So if you want stuff that's, you know, like, recent, um, you can change that. Some kids actually like to look for things that are at least five years old because those PDFs are usually always free. If you notice, um, well, there's none that came up super early. But if you um, got something from, like, this year, it would be very hard to get the PDF easily. Okay, so now we're here. The first thing to notice is um, whether or not the PDF is available online. It is right here. Um, this one, it's not available online. That doesn't mean you can't get it. It just means you'll have to go somewhere else. So I'm just going to click on here. Let's see if it pops up. Um, and there I would be able to look at this. Now, I would suggest that most of you, um, at least for the initial reading of your papers, try to do it online. Some of you hate to read online and you like paper, that's fine. But if you, if you when we download this paper, which I guess I'll do right now, um, you're going to see it. This one's not that long. This one's not too bad. It's like six pages, but many of them are like 20 or more. Um, so you would read this. Um, other things to keep in mind, suppose this, you glance at this paper, it looks pretty good. There's a couple of tips and tricks. One, um, the site, I don't know if you saw that, let me do it again. So on the bottom, underneath the, the citation, there will be um, a cite button. Um, work smart. So so we use Chicago style, which is closest to what's called CBE, or Chica um, the citation uh, style of biological editors. Um, you can cut and paste this and put this in. Be careful. Make sure that you um, like look at it and make sure it's set up correctly. This one is. Sometimes they come in all capitals, which is not allowed. Um, and sometimes they come in with like just initials um, or they're in the wrong format. Uh, so you can get citations that way. I also, as you begin to read these papers, I suggest you um, really utilize the save button. So if you click save, um, it doesn't look like it did anything, it just says saved. But you can go to um, my library and it, it will have all your papers. I obviously have a lot of papers, I've been doing this a while. Um, and, and you can then get to it again really easily without having to try and type in all of this nonsense. So I suggest you save all the articles that, that appear to be useful. Additionally, once you find a paper that's really good, which means you've like really read it thoroughly and it, it seems to be um, very useful for your topic, go back, look it up again, or pull it out of your save files, and then look at um, the cited by. Cited by is usually a decent bet. Um, it, it Cited by is how many papers since this paper came out have looked it up. So I'm going to click on it. And you can see that there's actually a whole bunch of more papers that are fairly relevant. Sometimes like this one really closely relevant. So that's one way to get another paper um, that's pretty good. Also, if you're feeling uh, like you trust Google super well, you can go to related articles. Um, I find this to be more hit or miss, but give it a shot and see what you get. So that's how you get to the papers. Um, change things up. So so um, don't just go by the common name. Um, go by related terms. So Danio is the genus. So if you notice, different papers came up. Um, if you um, use an acronym, spell it out. Oh, I'm going to try this. 
and biphenol A, um, Danio, and let's say Hatchet. Um, and you get different papers each time you see, and it gets more and more specific. So start broad and get more specific. If you're really struggling, uh, come see me and I'll help you do a search. Now, for papers that you don't have a link for, um, there's two things to do. That One, you can kind of hunt around online. You click all versions. Sometimes one will pop up as a PDF. Um, you can also see how this guy's name is underlined. Um, he's the, 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 the author of Note, who you would um, email or whatnot. I've had kids email authors and get papers back in a day or two, sometimes weeks. We also had a sad incident where the author was actually dead and we got some their child. But um, So, so you, you can contact um, authors directly. But the best bet for most of you will be to take your citations, um, put them in a Word document, cut and paste, and set up an appointment with Mrs. Claire Steimel. Now I sent you an email. Mrs. Claire Steimel um, runs the NOAA library for um, the particular branch we have, the James, um, the Northeast Fishery Science Center branch, and she can help you get those. But you have to work around her schedule, so don't leave this to the last minute. Um, waiting times to see her are anywhere from two days to a week. So, um, you know, if, if you think you're going to have a hard time getting sources, go early. Okay, so now you have your sources. I'm going to uh, shrink this for a second. Um, I'm just going to grab this paper. Oh, I made a mistake. I wanted to show you how to open this. So if, if you're using a Mac, the default, um, the, the PDF reader is preview. Um, but if you open it, if you force it to open with and switch it to uh, Acrobat, you get a lot of neat features. Now, all the computers we have at school at Acrobat, and Acrobat's usually free on most PCs, whether they're Windows or Mac, so you should be able to use it. Okay, so now you have this open. Um, I want to show you something. So it, if you go up here to this review and comment pane, which most of you have, um, if you go to um, um, comment view, oh, where'd it go? And there's another thing I wanted to show you. I want, oh, that was it. Show the comment and markup tool and um, show comment list. Um, so when you're reading these papers, like this one's 17 pages. So if this was a paper that was of interest to someone, um, printing out a lot of paper needlessly, especially because if you get to the very end, it'll be like eight pages of just citations. Yeah, see what I mean? Um, it, it, I prefer to read scientific literature on the computer. A, when you read these, you're frequently going to have to look things up, like terms you don't understand. Um, I'm sure they're, you just get into here, you're going to find a bunch of terms you don't know. Um, I don't know. Um, and additionally, um, besides looking things up, um, it forces you to sort of be more upright. A lot of you like to read before you go to sleep, and that's usually not a good idea. Oh, let me close this notification. Okay, so... Um, so suppose you're reading this, and, and most of you are very attracted to the intros and the abstracts because they're the easiest to read. So see this whole section of introduction? Definitely read it. Um, highlight things that are of interest. Most of your annotations cannot come from the introduction because as we read, notice like through this whole paragraph, at the end of every sentence, they have cited someone. So Gonzalez and Guzman, and then Bonilla and Gonzalez, and this Gonzalez Gomez guy is like writing with everyone. So um, it almost everything that you would find interesting in the introduction would be coming from someone else. Um, and that's okay, but you you have to cite them. So if you were interested into somebody studying something for 40 years, you would have to cite them and not this original paper. Um, and I'll talk more about that in class. But um, I'm going to skip to sort of the methodology because I think that's where, um, no, do to do. I'm going to scroll around. Do, do, do. Okay. Um, human use. I'm just going to kind of go in into here and grab. I just want to show you a couple of the, the tools available in Acrobat. So one of the things you can do is you if you grab this little obvious highlight button, you can highlight specific things um, and, you know, possibly be like, I want to put this in my annotated bib or I need to look this up. Um, so highlighting is useful. Um, additionally, it, you can leave notes to yourself. A lot of people use the, um, this horrible text tool, which is u vaguely useful, but it's huge. Blah. Um, I'm not a big fan of it. What I actually prefer to use are stickies. Um, so I, let's say I wanted to um, find out more about this information. Um, and you don't know, let's say I wanted to look up this paper um, and remind myself to do that. I would put a sticky note. Uh, do to do, do. Put it right here. 
um, and a sticky note pops up and you'd be like, um, and you can leave yourself notes. Look up this paper. It looks pretty horrible at the moment, um, but if you press a little shrinky, it goes away and it'll just be a reminder to look that up. So Adobe Acrobat has a lot of really useful tools and tricks that you can use and this is just the beginning. Um, make sure once you make these marks that you save and shrink it and then go away. All right, so that's how to do a literature source and how to begin to start reading your lit. Um, I'm going to give you an example. This is, um, I hope you can read this. I'm going to make it bigger. You're young, so you can probably read it. But um, this is an example of an annotated bibliography that someone turned in last year. Um, and what will happen is um, you'll turn this in to me, and I will make comments on it and give it back to you. So some good things. Um, Jan did an exceptionally good job of the level of detail. So she was looking for methodology. So she found the ideal temperature to raise her fish in. Um, and then she had, you know, all these details. So that was really good. You want to try to be as detail oriented as uh, possible. Also notice how simple she made her um, annotations. So um, she did a really good job of not plagiarizing. She did no cutting and pasting and put things in her own words completely while still citing the author. Um, I'll show you how it looks when I give it back to you. So um, here is the um, her revised one, uh, the one with my comments on it. Um, and it's sort of similar to the Acrobat, but you basically go to Tools um, and then find Track Changes, Highlight Changes, um, make sure everything's clicked. And you'll be able to see my comments. So my comments always say, I think this says Monmouth County Vocational School District, um, and make sure you tab over. So that's like I showed her how to fix that. Um, link works. Um, it is always a very good idea to include links. If you don't include links, you have to have your papers in the classroom so I can look at them. Uh, links are better. Um, and, and comments throughout. Um, so that's generally how an annotated bibliography looks um, in terms of level of detail. Uh, if you want to see an example of one, I can give you one in class. So that's going to be it for this video and there we go.